Hey, what's up guys, it's Alex from Lion's Paw and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. <laughs> In today's video, I'd like to release the full potential of DaVinci Resolve 18 new features, including DaVinci Resolve Object Mask Tracking and Depth Map. Before we continue to the filming part, I just wanted to say that everything we filmed and edited today was just basic stuff. If I were to do it for a client, then I would do much thorough job regarding lighting and editing as well. So please be kind in the comments. So let me show you how we film it and then I will show you how I edit it. Our setup for today is pretty easy. I'm gonna be using only one light, which is Aperture 120D Mark II with a Light Dome Mark II. I have eggshell here to prevent the spill of light all over the room. Then we are going to be using my Canon R6 right here with a 50mm lens, EF lens. And then we have here our black drop, which we are going to be using for the final shots. For today's video, we are going to be using this electric screwdriver instead of using lazy susan, just because it gives us a different perspective and different type of motion. For the first shot, we are going to be using this delicious meat and we will put it on the stick which we put on the screwdriver for the rotation. I put the screwdriver on the table just to make steady position for the rotation. And now I'd like to tell you a few things about camera settings. First of all, I'm going to be using manual focus, not to lose focus at any time of the rotation. And the second thing, I'd like to tell you a few tips regarding the settings. I have my aperture at f.4 to not lose focus at any time. The second thing I highly recommend you doing is using your shutter speed more than you actually need to avoid the motion blur, which will help you in the post-production to keep your tracking. So for example, I'm recording in 4K 50 frames per second and according to the rules, you need to use it with a 1 of 100 of shutter speed. But instead of doing that, I'm using it with a 1 over 400 to avoid motion blur as much as possible. Of course, for this you will need more light, but Aperture 120D is more than enough. For the best tracking results possible, I highly recommend you using, for example, a white wall where you have a lot of contrast, so your DaVinci Resolve object mask tracking will not lose where your meat or something else which you are filming is. Now we got few shots when our meat is parallel to our camera. Then I will try to move it a little bit to the side and we will try to get shots like this, maybe they will look better for our meat. I can see on my camera screen that in this type of setup I get a lot of shadows underneath of our meat and this might be a problem later on. So I will be using now a small aperture light to light the downside of our meat. I put aperture MC right here, this is a small light, but it is enough to light the bottom of our meat to avoid those shadows. Let's move on to our next shot. For this shot we are going to be using tomatoes and whenever you are using something fresh and juicy you need to spray it a little bit to have those a little drops of water on it to make it look even more fresh. And now let's make a few small juicy slices of the tomato. Don't be me, don't forget to press record. It was trickier with the buns rotation because the bread was just simply not spinning on one stick. So I put two sticks together with a duct tape. Let's see how it works now. Because it is trickier with the buns, it seems like that two sticks with a duct tape work just perfectly fine. The thing is that the wall is pretty white and the bread is white. So it means that I assume that my object mass tracking might not be able to identify the buns. So I, I will now move this table to the dark background and we'll see how it works there. So now we moved everything into the position and the thing is that I've got one problem here. I pierced the bun right here and the stick is a little bit visible. If you ever make a video like this, make sure to buy a thick bun and then it will be easier for you to manipulate with it. For our final shot, I'd like to play with the slow motion. 
so I put my camera for 100 frames per second in 1080p because I unfortunately Canon R6 doesn't film in 4K 100 frames per second, but it doesn't matter. Because I like playing with the slow motion in the post-production, unfortunately I am able to film only with 100 frames per second, but DaVinci Resolve has optical flow and speed warp which can recreate additional frames so you can slow your footage even further. But in order for me to get less as possible over the slow motion and to make it easier on the system, I again use shutter speed 1 over 400 and then when those objects fall they make less motion blur, it means that it might be a better solution for optical flow in the end. We are done filming, so let's move to our editing software. After importing the footage, I chose the part I would like to use. Then I went to the color tab and tried object mask tracking. After that, right click on the color grading tree, connected the node to the alpha output. After creating the alpha channel, your footage looks like this in the editing page. And what is amazing that DaVinci Resolve object mask tracking is able to keep such small details like this one. The problem with object mask tracking is after your tracking is done, you cannot manipulate your footage. It means you cannot animate it. I even tried to put it in the compound clip, it didn't work. Then I hope that this will be solved in future updates and this is just a bug because, for example, I used adjustment clip and I was able to animate adjustment clip and I didn't lose the tracking data from the clip underneath it. The main problem with the adjustment clip, as you all know, that it affects anything beneath the clip. So, for example, if you would like to put a background or motion graphics underneath your layers, it will be manipulated with adjustment clip as well. So, this is not the perfect solution for the moment. So I animated this midball with adjustment clip and then I copied the adjustment clip properties to the video itself. And of course, I lost the tracking data. After do the video animation, I of course color graded it and then I tracked it with animation altogether. In the editing page, it looks like this. After that, I found fire transition motion graphics and I added Gaussian blur to it to emphasize our mid. Then I manipulated the speed of the motion graphics to make it look better with our footage. Then I did the exactly same process for the tomato. First to animate it, then color grade it, and the third one is to object mask track it. With tomato slices, I realized that the easiest way to do animation is in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I will show you how you can do it. It's very easy, don't be afraid. So after making color grading and adding a speed ramps, you can right click on the video and choose new fusion clip. From here, you go to the fusion tab. In here, you need to go to the first frame of your video, then add transform node, then go to a transform mode properties, click, right click on the center and choose their path. It will automatically create a keyframe in the first frame of your video. After that, you can go to the moment where you have your speed ramp or slow motion and you can simply drag your footage there and it will automatically create another keyframe. The cool thing about that is that you can manipulate your path as much as you want to later on and you can make it as smooth as you wish to. To manipulate separate sides of your keyframes, you can simply hold command on your keyboard and then you can drag different sides of your keyframe and smooth out different parts as you wish to. I think this is a cool way to make your objects fly properly and then you can manipulate your keyframes at any time, any point as you wish to. And when you are manipulating those separate keyframes, you don't like move them or create additional keyframes. You manipulate those certain keyframes at any time and point and place. Try it, it's very easy. In the end, the footage looks like this. Another cool tip I found working with object mass tracking is right next. One problem I had after adding a stroke to tomato that after tracking was done, the stick was visible at some points of the video. So what I did, I added another minus stroke to the stick and it was gone like magic. After that, I created additional layers, animated everything, found bubble background for tomatoes and in the end it looks like this. Then I added some solid black background with some texture on it because I don't like this black emptiness. I think that this looks better. Then I did exactly the same steps for the buns. I even added some particles on the background to make it look better. And in the end it looks like this. I think it looks cool. One important thing to mention here is that if you have some speed ramps or slow motion in your footage, then your background, if you add some motion graphics on the background, 
have to have the same motion and speed like your flying subjects, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Then I edited the rest of the footage, it was just simple cutting per product. And here, as I promised you in the beginning, I slowed my footage even further. So instead of slowing down it to one fourth of the speed, I was able to slow down it to one eighth of the speed using optical flow and speed warp in DaVinci Resolve 18. As you can see, this video looks a little bit choppy, but it is because I slowed it down more than there are frames in the video. To apply optical flow, you need to find retime and scaling in your video inspector, choose retime process to optical flow and as you can see it's not that choppy anymore but it's not that perfect therefore you can choose motion estimation to speed warp and as you can see it already looks perfect you can sell this then I just simply repeated the process for the rest of the video. I had the hardest time playing with depth map. No matter what I did, even for such a static shot, I wasn't able to get clear resu results to separate my burger from the background and put some shine in behind the burger. No matter how hard I tried to play with it, no matter how I tried to isolate it, even put some keyframes, I wasn't able to get clear res results I wanted. Maybe I just don't know how to use depth map. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any luck playing with depth map because I really don't know how, like, what. Therefore, even for this shot, I went with object mask tracking and then I was able to easily put the shine in behind the burger without any problems at all. And this is the final result I was able to create without a green screen, really fast and reliable. <laughs> The thing I'd like to tell you is that despite of all bugs and shortcomings, DaVinci Resolve Object Mass Tracking is really a reliable tool which can provide very clear and fast results. I see a lot of use cases for the object mask tracking and depth map. I hope that they will solve all the issues and bugs in the next beta versions and that we will be able to use it without fighting it. But even already now you can easily use object mask tracking for color grading and separating your subject from the background to put some titles in behind you or something like this. You can even create a video like this if you are not afraid of challenge. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, as always, please leave me a like, comment down below and consider subscribing to my channel for more upcoming content. All those things really help this channel to grow and me to provide you with more content. It is a pleasure serving you guys and until next time, nas hledanou!